Hey guys, how's it going? This is Daniel with Fantasia Media, and today we're going to talk about how you can remove backscatter from your underwater photographs using Photoshop and Lightroom. Let's go ahead and get started. So for those of you who tuned into our previous video on uh, basic edits in Lightroom for underwater photos, um, you can see here this is the finished product of that. Um, everything looks good, colors are great, exposure is solid, but we still have these pesky little spots in the background, uh, and those are our good old backscatter. So we can remove that in a couple of ways. The first way is here in Lightroom. Uh, we can use the spot removal tool to get rid of those. This is a, uh, it's a bit slower, um, and it, but it does work. The way that it functions is it samples the area of the spot, picks a section from the photograph that matches that and then fills it in. This is awesome if you only have a couple of pieces of backscatter that you need to edit. Um, but if you have a ton of them and there's lots like there are in this photo, it can actually just fill that in with more backscatter. So that's kind of a problem. We need a faster way to do that. So we're gonna use Photoshop to get this backscatter out of here. To get there, I will go to the photo, right click on it, click edit in, and choose edit in Adobe Photoshop. All right, awesome. So I've got my photo pulled up in Photoshop. Um, the tool I'm going to use is the spot healing brush tool. This performs similar actions to the spot removal tool in Lightroom. It samples the area of that you want to fill in and fills it with a section from the photo that matches that. It's important to keep the spot removal tool relatively small at the beginning. The reason for that is um, it can sort of sample some of these areas that are lighter and move them into this darker area. And it can create this weird like step gradient uh, that looks completely unnatural. So um, we could fix that after the fact, but it's easier to start if you just keep it small. So I'm just clicking on each one of these little pieces of backscatter. Um, I like to start with the bigger ones first and then move on to some of the smaller ones. You can click and drag for some of those that your circle is not big enough to get, um, which is another reason to just keep the circle small because you can always just drag it. And for some of these uh, points that are on the animals, um, you can generally do those without causing too much of a change, but um, it's always good to just zoom in on some of those. And you can see here I was actually editing um, a spot off the fish, so it's good to just check, make sure that you're not um, changing that too much. The ocean's one thing, but definitely want to retain the detail in our critters here. There are other ways to do this. Um, for example, and I'll show you how to do this um, afterwards as well, you can put on a layer mask and then use a Gaussian blur to remove noise um, or a dust and scratches filter um, to sort of, basic. it basically makes it really soft and eliminates some of the backscatter. Um, it doesn't replace it like this. It actually just manipulates the image. Uh, it's definitely faster and in a lot of scenarios, it can be really good. Um, I prefer this method a lot of the times though. With the filter, I feel like I lose some control. Here I can see exactly how I'm changing um, every little piece and I have complete control over what I'm doing throughout the whole process. One thing that you can do sometimes, so this area um, over here on the right, the top right is pretty clear of backscatter. So once you've gotten most of it removed, you can increase your size a little bit and start sweeping through some of these spaces. Um, you definitely want to be careful. Don't make giant, giant adjustments. But once you've cleared out a little bit, you can really go to town uh, with some of the bigger ones. Careful when you get really close to some of the reef. Uh, it, it can sometimes sample spaces from the reef and sort of make it look unnatural. Um, undo, Command, or Control Z is gonna be your friend during this. 
up oh, and you can see there I accidentally sampled part of the reef command Z get that out of there here are some of the tricky parts too so where you've got a spot of backscatter that is actually covering up part of your reefscape just be really careful zoom in and fine-tune that one same within these sections where it's really tight. The amount of backscatter you want to remove, of course, is totally up to you. That's why I like using the spot removal tool. Um, gives you complete creative control. I am I, myself, I'm super nitpicky and I'm kind of a perfectionist and a completionist. So I get in there and remove them all. But again, that looks pretty good and if you zoom out, you can't see in there, but sometimes when I zoom in, I get way too wrapped up into it. Again, and so I'm over here on the left side that I haven't touched yet. Start big, start bright. Move on to the little ones after that. And so here, this is actually a perfect example. Uh, if I zoom in, up here you can sort of see that gradient I was talking about um, and you can see some of the noise that gets generated as you use the spot removal tool so I'll show you after this um, how we can get rid of that so another way to remove noise and something I actually like to do once I'm done using the spot removal tool is uh, applying filters to our image um, we only want to apply these to the background here. We don't want to have them applied to the foreground or the reefscape. So to do that, we'll go to our quick selection tool and start selecting the area we want to apply it to. So I can hold it down and it will automatically select what it thinks is right. You can see here I have selected some of the reef and a little bit of this fish. I don't really want to do that, so I'll hold option and remove that. And then to fill in some of the areas that uh, my removal um, went, went ahead and took out that I do want to include, I can just click back in it like I did originally. All right, cool. That looks pretty good. Uh, what I will do now is go up to Filter, Noise, and choose Dust and Scratches. I want to make sure we have the preview on, and then I will go out to a point where I will be applying this to. So more is, um, or less is usually better on this. Don't go too crazy. Somewhere around 10, a radius of 10. And a threshold of about four is good. And we can see that really, um, if I click, I can see what it looked like before. It cleaned up that backscatter really, really nicely. So one other filter I want to apply, leave this selected. Uh, I will go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and repeat the process I just did. So zoom out to the area that we'll be editing increase the radius a bit just to kind of blend everything really nicely. And one of the areas you want to pay attention to is out here. This is where you're going to really see the change. I may, ha I might have removed that um, had I known that I was going to affect it that way. I'll leave it for the purposes of this so you can see it, but depending on what you're going for, you may want to have that be a little bit sharper. And you can see if I increase that way too much, it just completely burrs everything out. So I think somewhere around seven is good. And I missed a little bit of the reef here, but that's okay. You can kind of see what that effect looks like. If you need to redo it, Control-Z removes the filters. Just go ahead and reselect and reapply. 
So to deselect, I'll hit Command D, and now we can export to Lightroom. So I'll just hit File, Save. The saving's done, so I'll jump back into Lightroom, and I can view my newly updated file here. Now I can add any additional edits I want, and then export it just like I would any other file. Now you should have a good idea of how you can use Lightroom or Photoshop to remove backscatter from your underwater photos. If you have any other questions, check out my website at www.fantasiamedia.com or shoot me an email at d-l-o-u-d at fantasiamedia.com. Until next time.